this little demonstration is to show you the difference between this steel ball is not magnetized. See, it doesn't stick to this steel bar. But this one is magnetized. Okay? So the difference is, let me get that off there. They're both one inch steel balls. Actually, this is a neodymium magnet that's a steel ball, but it's the same principle. I'm going to compare the one inch steel ball to what you'll see in a minute and the one inch neodymium N42 magnet to what you'll see in a minute. I'm going to show you how my uh, theory of how quantum mechanics and energy works how gravity works is how gravity goes to this and gravity goes to this differently. Okay? That's all it is, is how they accept gravity. Here's our sphere. It's non-magnetized, just a steel ball. And I'm going to show you now. Next to it, I'm going to put another sphere, which is going to be our demonstration sphere, where you're going to see smoke going into it. But remember, the smoke actually represents the electrical phenomena of gravity. And here the smoke is going, penetrating the ball centripetally all the way around. This is actually more uh, just completely surrounding its, its surface going in. It's more of a saturation. And here is our magnetized sphere. This is the magnet. And then next to it, I'm going to show the magnetized demonstration sphere to your right there and it's going to show the smoke coming in from the north and south poles mainly only and there it is and again the smoke represents a dielectric gravity penetrating the sphere from both ends towards the center and what I'll show you next is show them side by side and what you're seeing here is the same volume of smoke is penetrating both spheres in the same amount of time because you have distance versus time or time versus distance for the magnetized sphere it has to pressurize gravity gravity pressurizes into it to feed the entire sphere from two ends only rather than spherically radial like the one on the left the non-magnetized which that's more of a saturation on the non-magnetized i cannot show that with smoke here it is one last time saturation on the left and magnetization on the right the magnet has to speed up and pressurize gravity to feed all the atoms. Okay, my theory just shows or says, proposes the good vibrations, that a magnet, just like this one inch neodymium magnet, N42, is nothing more than Birkeland currents. Two of them. They're opposing each other. They're rotating in the same direction, but they're going towards each other to feed this. It's gravity in an accelerated state. It makes it a weak it's a weak but Birkeland current but it's powerful for its size it's substantial for no bigger than that is it has a pretty good size little dark mode phantom Birkeland current actually two of them and over here I've got a steel bar and a ball bearing they don't stick but as you see the magnet sticks to the ball that's how much power these little Birkeland currents have that's all it is little Birkeland currents and it'll stick that, and I can even stick the other ball through that steel. It's Birkeland currents, people. That's what magnets are. They're just micro Birkeland currents, but they're powerful enough that you know what magnets do. Everybody knows what magnets do. That's the power that they have, and that's what it is.